this morning. Notice in verse 1 of our text, he says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines over you. Notice the light that the children of Israel were called to shine is not their light. You know, God didn't say, you're going to get up and go out there and you're going to glow all by yourself. God says you're going to shine. Why? Because my glory shines in you and through you. In John chapter 15 and verse 5, Jesus put it this way. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abides in me and I am, that person is going to bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Christ is our power source. You know, I can have a light bulb and I can sit here and stare at that sucker all day. And, and go, glow. Glow. And I can walk into a dark room and I can hold it up. And see everybody look at my light bulb. Isn't it neat? Isn't my light bulb wonderful? And everybody in the dark room is going, well, I'll just plug the dark thing in so that we can actually get some light in this place. But you know, a Christian apart from Christ, a Christian apart from God, apart from His power, the same as me walking into a light room, dark room, and just holding up a light bulb and not seeing it in the picture. Because without Christ, without God, you and I have absolutely no power, no ability of our own to impact this world. So how do we plug into that power source? You, mean, you, know, you take the light bulb and you kind of screw it. So how, do, how does a Christian screw in to God's power, if you will? How do we put that in the fixture? Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians 5, we'll be beginning in verse 12. From chapter 5, beginning in verse 12, he says, Now we ask you, brothers, to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you, and the Lord and admonish you, and to regard them very highly and love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we exhort you, brothers, warn those who are irresponsible, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue that which is good for one another and for all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the Holy Spirit, don't despise prophecies, but test all things, hold on to what is good, stay away from every kind of evil. Now may the God, God of peace himself sanctify you, and may your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Brothers, pray for us also. Read all the brothers with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We plug into the power source by following the pattern that the Apostle Paul, through the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit, lays down right here. So, what are there some key components to this? And the first one is fellowship with other believers. Now, Hebrews 10.25 says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. That is, church attendance, being a part of, regular part of a group of believers or a body of believers is important. And, of course, some people will kind of look at me and go, well, I can worship God just as well out of the end. Ten but two as I can in the church of God. I can, I can do that out of the way. I can do it in the forest. I can do it alone in my bedroom. You know, you can worship God there. But there are some reasons God told us that we need this fellowship. And the first reason that God told us to go to church is because we need leadership. Notice here in verses 12 through 15, he tells them that they are to recognize those who labor among you and believe you in the Lord and admonish you. And to regard them very highly because of their work. You know, we need leadership. And we need it for two reasons. First of all, we need leadership because we need to be reminded of what God's vision for the church truly is. You know, we hear it so much. We read it so much. We see it so much. It's easy to forget that it's the job of God's leaders to stand up here and proclaim that mission to you every Sunday. In some way, shape, or form. We also need... God's leadership through the men that He sets above us so that we can properly interpret the Scripture sometimes. You know, there's we have spiritual gifts a little bit more in a minute, but God gave there's specific men and women that God gave the gifts of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and prophecy so that they can, so they can look in the Bible and they see things the rest of us might otherwise miss. Those who have word of wisdom are more prone to be able to practically apply the Word of God. So if you've ever looked at a verse and gone, Man, hell on earth. What on earth am I supposed to do with this thing? That their job is to be able to clear that up for you. Word of knowledge. 
It's those who can see the deep mysteries of the Word of God. You ever look at the verse and go, man, I have no clue what that means. You know, it's like reading a song and all along and, and you're doing great and all of a sudden you just do this blah, 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 yada, yada, blah, blah. What on earth does that mean? That's their job to be able to see that. Guys, you have know, prophecy that are given primarily the gift of vision casting and covenant calling that are able to call God's people back to His covenant and back to His vision. We need leadership. Now, this is not to downplay what we call the priesthood of the believer. Because there is a sense in which every child of God is able to read the Bible and understand it for themselves. But there are certain things that He gives to the people with these gifts to teach us about. You know, and sometimes I think we overdo the priesthood of the believer so much that we downplay the leadership that God gives us. You want to know why God really gave us leaders? Read Ephesians chapters 4 and 5. He gave them to us so they could equip us to do the work of the ministry, so they could explain those things that we don't understand. So that they could guide us in the way 